Hi, this is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing our weight loss vlog. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been doing one. I apologize, so let's try to pick up where we left off. We're going to talk today about the wonderful aspect of uh, weight loss technology, which um, is not so wonderful, but we will go over it. The whole Fitbit or accelerometer uh, phenomenon that people are getting into. So. Lots of people liked these, um, like these things that you can wear on your wrists or wear on your shirt, and they tell you how many steps you've taken. And um, today, I just want to caution you about these and kind of reinforce to you what you really need to focus on. There was a study that was done in a recent issue of JAMA, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, and they actually compared two groups of people. One group who wore these wearable technology or accelerometers uh, to tell them how many steps they were taking in a day, and another group who did not wear them, and they gave them essentially uh, equivalent kind of dietary uh, education and monitoring capability. And the really uh, frustrating thing about this study, or the sad thing, is that the people that were wearing the accelerometers or the wearable technology to tell you how many steps you're taking in a day, they lost half as much weight as the people who did not wear them. And while this may seem surprising to some people, to a lot of us, it's not really surprising because we know that often these accelerometers or the wearable technology, and I hate to pick on Fitbit, but it's kind of the one that everybody knows, but all of them do this now, the iWatch and everything, you know, can measure your activity and your steps. So a lot of them overestimate uh, or underestimate, but a lot of them do overestimate or give a wrong uh, calculation for how active you are. And from a psychologic standpoint, the downside of this is that if you look at your wearable technology and you see that you've burned X number of calories, then oftentimes people will justify that they can eat more than they can have their half a cup of ice cream or they can eat their little bowl of Doritos or they can have their cheeseburger or whatever, as opposed to just seeing the information and then sticking with their diet. So I would caution everybody who's out there kind of buying into this wearable technology phenomenon that only look at it and only use it to just the extent that you see uh, that it motivates you maybe to do more activity. At no point should you allow this technology to get into your head that, oh, that means I can eat more given that I've done X amount of steps. You should always look at it as just maybe a a motivational t tool to do more activity, okay? And I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, so that's my big caution. And the other things uh, I'm just going to mention to you also as a, as a phenomenon of this buying something and kind of letting that be your excuse or reason or, hey, I did this so now I'll lose weight as opposed to... Um, really paying attention to calorie intake. Um, and here's my board again, guys. So wearable technology has worn off a little bit. Gym memberships, special foods, supplements. These are all things that I would caution you about where people get into the uh, modality of, I think we all know or have experience with doing this, you buy the gym membership and then you don't go. Or you buy the weight loss supplement and then maybe you take it but you're still eating your ice cream at night. Or you know, these types of things. So always be very wary of anything that's costing you money or says buy this and you'll lose weight or sign up for this and you'll lose weight. The only thing that's going to do it in the end is restricting your calorie intake and increasing your activity level. And you don't have to spend money for that. You can, you know, you can limit your calorie intake. Um, uh, and certainly there's always the caveat right? Less expensive food is often not as healthy food and often is more calorie dense. But you can, there are ways to do it, to to eat healthy even, and there are other, I've done other videos on this, even on a limited uh, um, uh, income or limited uh, resources, um, to keep your calorie intake low, 
uh, to and increase your activity level. So um, you guys are doing great. You have great, great questions. Sometimes um, there are questions that people ask, and I've covered them in other videos. So one thing I will suggest is if you if you have a question, go back and look at some of the titles of the we're over twenty I think five videos at this point. See if um, sometimes it's been answered in one of the other videos, and I'm really behind as far as answering questions, so I'll try to get to those. Um, but uh, and again, I'm sorry a lot of people have trouble finding uh, providers who will write for weight loss medicine, and this is not. Unfortunately, um, uh, a surprise either because there have been some questionnaires or case studies in the New England Journal of Medicine where a lot of physicians do tend to respond in the manner that shows that they're much more interested in just saying, oh, eat less and exercise more and kind of think that's it. So, But be persistent. Uh, again, go and find there are physicians who are bariatricians or board certified in obesity medicine. You can even go to the obesity medicine website um, and try to see if there are, I think they have links to physicians who are board certified, so in obesity medicine. Okay, so you're all doing great, and keep up the good work. Thank you.